Morning, everyone. No, this is not a credit card. This is the key to this 2021 Tesla Model Y Performance. This is probably one of the most exciting videos that I will probably ever do because this is gonna be a learning experience for both of us today. I've never driven a Tesla. I drove it down here so I have a basic idea of how the car functions. However, I've never really driven it on the road. So I'm super excited. So let's get right into it. I'm gonna go ahead and open up the trunk for you. Nice little carbon fiber lip here, dual motor. Oh, the one thing I do need to do before we get started here, this key right here, you have to put it right on the door pillar here. That is unlock and lock. So I'm gonna go ahead and unlock the car. And then we can open the power lift gate. And it is a hatchback type, so the whole back hatch does open. You have a good amount of room back here for it being a little hatchback. So this right here folds down your second row, flat. You have a little pocket inside here, as well as on the other side. You open up the cargo hatch here, and you have a super, super deep little pocket in here for luggage and groceries, stuff like that. Let me go ahead and close this. Gonna hop in the back here. So the doors look like they don't, there's like no way for them to open. But what you do is you push in with your thumb here, the handle comes out, and then you just pull like a normal car door. So I'm gonna go ahead and put these seats up. Very, very heavy to put up. Do take a little bit. I'm gonna put the charge, actually, you know what? I'm gonna put the charging cable in the trunk here. go and the first thing I notice is since it's so minimalist in here with the interior like all you have is that big screen and two buttons on the steering wheel with your windshield wipers and uh, drive mode selector there's almost like an echo in here and this entire roof is see-through like a pair of sunglasses that's really really cool it's not a sun it's not a sunroof it doesn't open at all or anything but it's just this fixed piece of glass that you can look out of. That's absolutely incredible. But the seats are super, super comfortable. Um, I really like I really like sitting back here. The floor is completely flat, uh, so you could lay some longer items down on the floor there. You do have your vents back here, two USB-Cs. And then you do have your two cup holders there. I'm going to go ahead and get out. Now, it's not a normal pull handle. Uh, this is suede wrap, too, which is very nice. Uh, it's a button right here, so it kind of works like... Uh, I've had experience with Chevy Corvettes. It's an electronic door open, so you just press the button, and it opens. Now, this is all electric, obviously, with it being a Tesla. There is no engine. It's an, it's an electric motor. It makes 456 horsepower. It makes 497 pound-feet of torque, and the range, if I'm not mistaken, is about 303 miles. Uh, if you did get the long-range version, you're around 330 miles. Uh, so that's pretty solid. I mean, I, the competitive, I did a video on a Chevy Bolt EUV. That range is about 250 miles. Uh, so this, this has quite a bit more range uh, than that, but Tesla's also been doing it for a very, very long time. And these right here are on each side. Those are your little cameras. I'm gonna go ahead and open up the door. And we're gonna have a seat. Now you'll notice there is a gas pedal and a brake pedal. You can drive it like a normal car if you want to. You can change the settings in the screen here. Today, I'm gonna be trying to utilize the one pedal driving. So I'm gonna go ahead and close the door. If, uh, if I'm driving using one pedal driving, if I push the gas pedal in, it accelerates. However, if I let off the gas pedal a little bit, the car will actually slow down for me. I don't need to brake. The car actually brakes for me just by lifting up off the gas, which is pretty neat. Now, in order to turn the vehicle on, I noticed the climate stuff and everything is on, but in order to actually turn the vehicle on to drive it, you have to put, take the key card, 
you don't you don't have to open this if you don't want to but i'm just showing it you to give you an idea this little area right behind the cup holders right here you have to set the card for a second it's already unlocked but this that's what you would have to do in order to uh unlock the vehicle to drive it you just have to set it here and then you're good to go so i'm going to go ahead and set the card right there now you'll notice extremely minimalist there are very very little buttons in this car except for the windshield wipers the turn signals and then when you do put your turn signals on it puts on the respective uh those little rear facing cameras below the mirrors there it puts those respective ones on and then of course your drive mode selector you Yep. So that's letting you know that the car is turned on. I do need to put my seatbelt on, which I'm just going to do first. To put it in drive, you just need to have your foot on the brake, and you'll see R, N, and D. You just push all the way down. And now we're in drive. Same thing, push all the way up. Now you're in reverse. And then push P in. Now you're in park. Now... If you're just using the steering wheel normally without being in any of the menus, the uh, this buttons and scroller on the left side does your radio volume, and then the one on the right side can actually set, if you hit it left to right, will actually set your following distance behind somebody. So I'm going to go into, so you'll see you'll have a full, you'll have a full map screen here. Really, really cool uses navigation just like any other vehicle. I'm going to go click on the car icon right here because that sh that tells you a bunch of different driver information about this Tesla. So first we're going to go into controls. I have the automatic high beams turned on even though I don't really need it. Uh, headlights are on automatic. I can fold the mirrors if I want. Keep in mind, everything that has to do with this vehicle, besides these couple scrollers and your drive mode selector and windshield wipers, is controlled by the screen. There are no mirror selector buttons, nothing. So it's all on here. You can do your child locks, window locks. Uh, you can open the glove box. There's no glove box button or handle. Uh, windshield wipers, you can adjust the mirrors here. You can do left or right, and you actually use the left scroller to adjust them. And then you can switch to the right and do the same thing. Pretty neat. You can have it auto tilt, auto fold, auto dim. I have all those turned on. You just hit save and X out of it. It's like using a computer pretty much. Uh, you can have it record. So one thing I thought was pretty cool is if you don't have the key card and you actually try unlocking the door, it has something called sentry mode. So that will actually record, using those little side cameras down there, it'll actually record whoever is trying to essentially get into your vehicle, which I think is, is awesome for security reasons. Steering, same thing, you can use the scroller to go uh, up, and, up and down, and left and right to go in and out, and you can save it. Yep, sentry mode, you can turn on and off, you can dim and brighten this. We're gonna go to pedals and steering. Right now I have acceleration on sport, we're gonna have fun with this thing today. Uh, I am going to do obviously normal driving, some back roads, some highway. But when we get on, but when we get on the on ramp like we always do, I want to see what this thing can do, and I'm sure you guys do too. Uh, steering mode, I just have it set for comfort. Uh, you could set it to standard, which tightens it up a little bit more, and sport, which really tightens it up. Right now, I'm just going to drive around with comfort. Stopping mode. Right now, I have it on hold. That's the one pedal driving. So if you take, if I take my foot up off the gas, it'll stop for me. And you can have it also set to creep, which is slow, which has it slowly move when the pedals are released, and then roll, which just lets it roll normal speed when pedals are released. So I'm going to leave it on hold. Uh, Off-road assist, that just changes traction settings uh, to make it easier to go off-road. Um, this, If you're stuck in the snow, you can use slip start, and then you have trailer mode if you have a trailer. Charging, you can open up the charge port. It's in the back of the tail light. You can open that up if you want. You can see your charge, you can schedule to charge, this is the last charge that was done at a supercharger. Autopilot, I have it turned on, I'm going to try using it on the highway here for you. Um, can't guarantee that because I'm still kind of learning how to do it myself. Uh, but you can set a speed limit, 
You can have the blind spot camera come on automatically. You can do a speed limit warning. Forward collision alert, you can set that to whatever you'd like. Lane departure warning. And you can turn off, on and off, all of your uh, safety features. Actually, there's, it's kind of cool. So when the light when a light turns green, if you're in front of it, it'll yell at you if you're not paying attention. Obstacle awareness, automatic braking, stuff like that. Shows you all your keys. You can turn the child locks on. You can have it to when uh, your driver door locks and unlocks when you walk away from it. Your lights. I'll turn the fog lights off. I didn't realize they were on. You can turn the dome lights, auto high beam, headlights after exit, steering wheel lights. Display. You can have it light or dark mode. I just have it in auto, because it'll do that later on tonight. You can set your energy display to a percentage or a distance. Ah, I think distance is pretty cool. So miles, Fahrenheit, PSI, stuff like that. You can do your current trip, trip since your last charge, A and B. You can reset them just like a normal car. It's just on this screen here. Different navigation settings. You can have it reroute to save time, which I think is actually really, really cool. Uh, you can have a speed limit on. Now this is how you turn uh, the car off. So you hit park and you put your foot on the brake. The parking brake turns on or you can also power off the entire system so this way the car shuts off and the battery isn't drained. But then I'll have to just take the card and turn it back on. Let me go back to where I was here. Oh, you got to put your foot on the brake and turn it on. There we go. That's why it didn't work. I had to put my foot on the brake and then tap the card. Safety. Yep, power off. You can turn your... I have the dash cam on automatically. Park assist chimes. Uh, back here, you, you will see uh, gel mode. So gel mode reduces just reduces the uh, chime volume. You can, put your pin, you can put a pin number in in order to drive it. You can put in a pin number in order to open the glove box. Cabin overheat protection. Uh, you could look at service. You can adjust your headlights. You can actually calibrate your own headlights from the screen there, which is pretty cool. You could, if you have different sets of wheels, you could change which wheel. Camera calibration for the uh, seat, the steering. I mean, you do have power seats on both sides, so you could just adjust it there. Uh, shows you what software you're on, how many miles is on the vehicle. pretty cool. All right. So given everything we've seen here, I'm just going to go through these icons here. You can connect your phone with Bluetooth, radio, all your different cameras. You can look at a bunch of different apps here, theater, arcade. I mean, you, if you're stopped somewhere, you can even, you can even play video games in this thing, which is pretty cool. There's a little arcade there. Uh, toy box, you can so push the gear stock down four times quickly when auto steer is engaged. Yes, the road is now a giant rainbow. Everyone needs more cowbell. Oh my goodness. So while, while it's on autopilot, you can actually play. Looks like you can actually play games on this thing, which is insane. And then you can connect your phone. Uh, climate is dual zone. I can do, I can, if I click on that there, I can adjust mine. I can have the fan turned up. Air conditioning, front and rear defrost. Same thing for the right side and also the rear. Okay. All right. I think we're ready to take this thing for a ride. You got your rear view mirror here, auto dimming. Your hazards are up there, which is kind of quirky. This is a magnet. This isn't actually like a, a clamp that you clip it into. All right. Enough talk, let's get on the road. Foot on the brake and in drive. You notice it stays put and I don't have my foot on the gas, but as soon as I put my foot on the gas, we're off. It's gonna take some getting used to. I just have to get used to the car 
stopping without using the brake pedal. So it is going to be a bit of a learning curve to... Oh, that's because I was over the line. It yells at me when you're over the line. And it shows you the lines and what direction the traffic's going. Which is really, really cool. I'm going to let up off the gas here just to give myself some practice first so I don't go out into the middle of the intersection. Not bad. We're getting the hang of it. Let this guy go. Quite a bit of traffic here today for a Sunday morning. I do really like the cabin. I really like how this drives. Yeah, it's just the charger rolling around. It does feel pretty empty in here, like I said, with it being very minimalist. Uh, there, it does create a little bit of an echo. The sound, my sound, my voice is just kind of bouncing off everywhere. Gets up and goes pretty good. trying to practice my letting up off of the gas pedal. I think I can do that. Okay. And then just show you that it's a red light. I'm going to look and see if it turns green. I don't have the green light chime turned on. But yeah, it shows you that it turns green. That this is absolutely incredible. I've never I've never driven anything like this. Like this is super super cool. And just the fact that you don't hear an engine noise is just really, really weird. Seat's super comfortable. The steering wheel feels just right. I mean, the leather wrapped has a really nice feel to it. The steering wheel, I feel, is a little bit smaller than other cars out there. It's one of the smaller steering wheels that I've, I've uh, touched in a car, but it feels, it just, it, it feels right. It actually does. So we're gonna see how this thing drives around turns here. I still have the steering in comfort mode. And actually, I braked pretty good there. A Little bit of body roll, but not too bad. And on the gas. Oh my goodness. Good Lord. <laughs> oh, wow. On-ramp's going to be fun. It definitely drives super nice. And this, the handling is very nice. There actually isn't, I mean, I'm going around these turns. There actually isn't a ton of body roll. I mean, it is a, it is a fairly large hatchback, so I'd expect a little bit. But all in all, handles very nicely. Another thing that is nice is if you do use the one pedal driving, you'll see this little green bar lighting up. That's regenerative braking. So as I let off the gas here, it actually is charging the battery when it puts the brakes on. Super cool. Takeoff is super smooth in this thing. I mean, it's a little bit of a learning curve to, to drive something like this with the one pedal and stuff like that, but I mean, if you get the hang of it, this is a super smooth car to drive. I mean, it should for $75,000, but I've driven other cars that are $75,000 that were, in my opinion, not this nice. Actually, I'm starting to, I'm starting to take a liking to the minimalist look here, except for this giant computer that I have sitting in front of me. Oh, put the white wipers on when I put the blinker on. All right. 
So we're gonna test the power of the performance model on the highway here, as well as engage autopilot. All right, I got steering in sport. I have acceleration in sport. Here we go, from about 15 miles an hour. Three, two, one. Oh my good, oh my God. Good, good Lord. Holy cow. Oh my, that was insane. And that's not even, this isn't even the most powerful model they have. This is like 456 horsepower. I couldn't even imagine what the Model S Plaid is like if that's that aggressive. Holy cow. Wow. I'm gonna do one more just for giggles here. Like, that's insane. Electri I'll tell you what, uh, I like a good exhaust note as much as the next guy, but the, the electricity really is the future. Holy cow. Wow. That is impressive. Jeez. All right, so I'm going to put on the uh, autopilot. So all you have to do is you have to press down on the drive selector stock twice. And you can see the blue lines, that's how you know it's active. Now if you put the turn signal on, as far as I know, if you put the turn signal on, it'll go into the next lane if nobody's there. I'm not sure if it will or not because I broke I broke steering so now now I'm steering so I don't know if it does do that that shows you there's a car on the other side there the autopilot's neat I think that's really cool it might I don't know if how it works it might be if you have a uh, if you have a um, navigation route set like if it tells you to like get off at certain places, maybe that's how that works. Maybe I, I don't know if I could just put my blinker on and it changes lanes. I don't think that's how that works, I guess. But this is really cool. And it's not like Chevy's like lane keep assist where it like just ping pongs you back and forth between the lines here. It's actually lane centering, which is really, really cool. Uh, maybe that just lets you so this way you don't take a nap while you're on autopilot here maybe it does that like it has you like give the wheel a slight tug just to make sure that you're still being attentive because it is still in beta stage at least that's what it said on the screen when i was looking through the settings really really cool You can tell the going flat out in this thing really, really drains the battery, unfortunately. But I'm blown away. Like, this is super, super neat. What a neat car. The dr it, Like, not only is the performance there, because obviously this is the performance model, but the drive quality is there too like just the feel of the steering wheel how comfortable the seats are the, how much cabin space you have that giant glass roof like if it just feels it feels so good to drive something like this and like i said i'm the kind of guy who likes giant v8 engines that scream to 8000 rpm as much as the next guy but this is just, this technology is so otherworldly to me because I'm not as familiar with it. There's some people that drive these every single day and they're like, ah, that's not a big deal, it's just a Tesla. But for somebody that hasn't had a lot of seat time in something like this, this is absolutely incredible. I'm 
kind of sad the drive's come to a close. I did get used to the one pedal driving though, so I did get, I got used to that, so that feels pretty good actually. It's feeling a little more natural the more seat time you have. Okay. Put my foot on the brake, put her in park. Go into the screen here. Go into the screen here and power her off. Now, I can't remember, was it display? No, it wasn't display, was it controls? No, I'm trying to, I'm trying to remember what, safety? Oh, safety, there we go. Power off and power off. Now it's off. I am gonna turn back this, uh, the screen back on though because I didn't show you the frunk. And that's how you open it. There is a button on the, the trunk, but there is no button for the frunk. It has to be done on the screen. It's a term that a lot of car companies have been coining lately to describe a trunk in the front because there's no engine. So you do have a nice little storage cubby in here. Get your tow hook below that. Your windshield wash is right here. It's really the only thing you have access to, unless you're a Tesla mechanic. I'm gonna go ahead and turn this off again. Okay. I'm gonna lock it up. Well, that was one heck of an experience. That was absolutely incredible. This is probably one of my favorite cars that I've ever done on this channel. Um, and I really hope you guys enjoyed this too. So uh, thanks for watching and I will, as always, see you in the next one.